Our next guest doesn't have the word quit in his vocabulary. In the early 80s, while serving in the Navy, Glenn Kapowski had his tonsils removed. Sadly, an artery was nicked, and he received a blood transfusion that was tainted with both AIDS and hepatitis C. And since then, his one-day-at-a-time fight to survive also includes educating North Texas students that HIV and AIDS is still a threat in our world, and Glenn has stopped by to share more about what it's like to walk in his shoes, and we are so thrilled to have you back today. Thank you, very much. Um, you know, you and I had a chance to chat a little bit this morning. Um, you do talk a lot with children and, and teenagers about HIV and AIDS. The numbers are rising, Glenn. Why is this happening? Probably because of the lack of, um, you know, public uh, notice. Mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, you don't see anything on TV anymore. People think that these drugs are cures, mm -hmm. and they're really not. It's buying you time. And, and you uh, have these drugs. You wanted to show us yeah. what a day in the life is like. And how many pills do you take every day? Well, now it's down to about 52, but I was up to close to 80 pills a day uh, a couple of years ago until my kidneys were poisoned. Mm. And I was on dialysis on my deathbed in August 2013. And uh, my kidneys healed, mm. and I was taken off dialysis in three months. So I was very lucky. But mm -hmm. um, we had to get me off some of the drugs that were just tearing my kidneys apart. Right. And, and $107,000 you know, a year, right, just for the medication? Yes, yeah, wow. for my entire care through the VA system. Wow. Yes. You mentioned a moment ago there isn't a lot on TV about right. AIDS. Right. And you have something you really want to do, right? You have yeah. a little life bowl. Can we talk about <laughs> oh, that yeah. for a second? <laughs> sure. <laughs> so you really want to be on the Ellen show, right? Yeah, yeah, because she, 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 she's she been affected by AIDS very much. Mm -hmm. and. You know, um, I think through all the programs that I think she would probably be the one that I would need to reach out at the most. Um, I admire her for what she does and for the money she donates for AIDS in the country. So I think she's probably one of the better leaders that will hear me out and let and me... get your story out. Which right. And your story, your story is one where, you know, when people hear HIV AIDS, they, they think sexually transmitted disease. Right. That's just not what happened to you. And tell us about that a little bit. No, uh, yeah, sadly, after I left Lebanon in 1983, um, uh, my tonsils erupted and I needed blood transfusions and they, well, after they nicked an artery. Mm. And, um, and then I was told about four or five months later that um, HIV had been introduced in me, as well as uh, uh, hepatitis C. Uh, so my blood was double tainted. Uh, there were quite a few of us that got it through blood wow. back then. Um, but um, my message is beyond that, really, because it's about um, teaching kids about HIV, but at the same time, <clears throat> teaching them a little bit about respect and honor. And that is the fact that um, I, I was somewhat chased for my first two homes by neighbors that were tormenting me for having AIDS. People who are scared, who yes. don't know any better and intolerant. Right. Mm -hmm. And that, that's, I'm trying to break down that stigma just a little bit and let people understand what HIV is mm -hmm. all about. Uh, it's more than just the disease. It's what happens to you. I was total, totally paralyzed 15 wow. years ago in a wheelchair, and I had to teach myself how to walk. And I have to ask difficult. you this, at what point in time in this fight have you wanted to give up, have you said enough is enough, and what has been the thing that, make you, that makes you want to keep fighting? Um, I have never once wanted to give up, mm -hmm. ever. Um, you know, I fought from the very beginning. Um, when 1983, I'd been in the Navy eight years by then, and I stayed in, did my full 20 for 12 years on active duty mm -hmm. uh, with HIV. Um, it went to full-blown AIDS in 1990, and I had some difficulties, but I was determined to finish my goal, and that was my job. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I felt like I had to attain that uh, for my benefits, mm -hmm. because without this paid for, I'd be in bankruptcy. I mean, I couldn't afford this stuff, and that's why so many people die of it. And that's why I'm bringing awareness uh, in our community, so that people do under, <clears throat> young kids do understand mm -hmm. That there are consequences to actions. Now. Absolutely. You know, I mean, it really is. And, and I'm just amazed, though, having grown up. You're not old enough to remember all of this, <laughs> but but what it was like when the AIDS epidemic really sort of came to light in the '80s, right. um, and how scary it was for everyone because we didn't know much yeah. about it. And you hear you say you were uh, diagnosed with AIDS in 1990, and here it is 2015, and you're still thriving and sharing your message is. So 
such an incredible uh, well, story of overcoming adversity. Thank you very much. It, it, you know, it, it really is a challenge, though. Don't mm -hmm. I don't want to underline sure. that. It, you know, every day is something else. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I have failed four colonoscopies because, as a paraplegic, I, nothing works from the waist right. down. So I have to cath. I have to, you know, do everything myself. And it's very difficult. So paraplegics get uh, a lot of colon cancer, and we suspect I may have that right now because my my uh, backup, my system gets backed up into my colon, and it could develop cancer there. Well, so you I've, certainly you know, have overcome, and, and a hero to us. And we thank you for coming back. You'll have to come back again because we want to see how you're doing. Okay. Thank you much. Well, I you can get in contact story. with Glenn by emailing him at glenn.kopansky at sbcglobal.net and schedule him to come to your son or daughter school. He speaks all over the place to deliver his program about AIDS awareness. So important. All right, when we come back, we'll meet a mother who is still living with the unthinkable, but as you'll see, Cynthia Grace finds strength and grace to honor the loss of her daughter, Shelly. We'll be back with more of the broadcast right after this.